So the Chiefs keep making calculated moves in free agency after bringing back a couple of very key pieces early on. And one of the moves they made today is an underrated one where they took a swing at raising the floor of a position group that desperately needs it. So we gotta talk about that, a veteran safety returning, pending Chiefs free agents moving on, and more. But first, how about those? <laughs> After Drew Tranquil was re-signed to a three-year $19 million deal, that was basically the writing on the wall for linebacker Willie Gay Jr., who already alluded to playing his last game at Arrowhead after the conclusion of the wild card game against the Dolphins. So with Willie searching for a new team in free agency, he took to Twitter slash X this morning to let the people know something that I guess has been gnawing at him when he said, quote, I never tried to defend myself on social media, LOL, but I have to say to all fans, please don't judge my talent based on the 20 to 25 plays a game I played last year, LOL. Getting a feel for the game and momentum is real. Well, I'm not sure what's been said out there about him or what he's seen personally, but I think Willie is a very athletic linebacker that can make some plays and will definitely sign elsewhere this offseason. That's not the issue. With that being said, though, I do think the Chiefs made the right choice by signing linebacker Drew Tranquil. And I'm trying to figure out Willie's reference here for 20 to 25 plays per game because in the regular season, he averaged nearly 40 snaps per game. The playoffs was closer to 25, though, with him dealing with that neck injury. So maybe that's what he was specifically referring to. Either way, I think he played well via the role he was given and used in with Kansas City as he helped the team win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Next up, we have some former Chiefs player news as two pending free agents so far have signed with other teams. Late last night, it was announced that punter Tommy Townsend is signing a two-year, $6 million deal with the Houston Texans. Townsend moving on, though, was not a surprise considering the Chiefs signed punter Matt Ariza back on February 22nd to a super cheap deal. Matt Ariza is going to cost the Chiefs just $795,000. Meanwhile, Tommy will be roughly $3 million a year for the Texans. So that's some pretty good savings there for the Chiefs, although time will tell how Ariza performs after his time away from the game, both as a punter, which we know he is great at, and as a placeholder. Tommy was okay as a punter last year. It was a bit of a down year for him, to be honest, but was incredible as Butker's placeholder. And that's why I believe his contract with the Texans is very well deserved. He's been a top punter in the NFL, aside from last year in his down year, and I wish him nothing but the best in Texas, other than when he has to play against the Chiefs. Someone else I'm happy for is the three-time Super Bowl champion offensive guard Nick Allegretti. He showed up big for the Chiefs in the playoffs after Joe Tooney injured his peck, and Allegretti himself completely tore the UCL in his elbow during the Super Bowl, but finished the game out anyway, not missing a single snap. Patrick Mahomes even called Allegretti a beast, saying, we told him we needed him out there and he didn't miss a snap. After the season was over, Allegretti said he would love for the next step of his career to be somewhere he could be a starter, which probably meant if he could land somewhere, it wasn't gonna be with the Chiefs. And the Washington Commanders came knocking on the door. Last night, Ari Mirov announced Allegretti is expected to sign with the Commanders on a three-year, $16 million deal. So Nick gets his wish, which is awesome, but that is definitely a loss for KC's O-line depth because that man was incredible. And that makes the second year now that the Washington Commanders have snagged somebody from the Chiefs O-line to have as their own. Remember, Andrew Wiley was the year prior. Then, late last night, Jeremy Fowler of ESPN tweeted out that the Chiefs, among others, remain interested in free agent receiver Darnell Mooney, who had his best seasons under Matt Nagy when he was coaching the Bears. Well, I do think the Chiefs most likely offered Mooney some type of a deal, letting him know what they were comfortable with. And it obviously wasn't enough because this morning it was reported that Darnell Mooney signed with the Falcons, joining Kirk Cousins for a stint in Atlanta. The deal for Mooney is three years, 39 million with 26 fully guaranteed. And some were relieved that the Chiefs did not sign Mooney for this price. But for what it's worth, he was projected to get around 13 million APY in free agency, so the price seems about right. So while the Chiefs didn't land Mooney, there are still plenty of other wide receivers the Chiefs could be looking into, including Calvin Ridley, Marquise Brown, Curtis Samuel, and several others. At this time, it looks like the Patriots are pushing to try and land Ridley, but Adam Schefter said he's eyeing a return to Jacksonville if they can make it happen. 
And I don't blame him for wanting to stay in warmer weather and with a team that has a much higher chance of making the playoffs than the Patriots who are in a rebuild. If the Chiefs are interested in Ridley, it's not being announced and he honestly might be way out of their price range. Marquise Brown, meanwhile, is definitely an intriguing option with the speedy receivers still out there and available as are a plethora of others. There's also receivers that could get cut as a cap casualty and become available as well. So I'm sure Kansas City is still weighing out all their options and having conversations with some receivers and their representatives because they, just like us, we as fans know that the wide receiver room has got to get upgraded. And then the Chiefs did make a move today so far, signing Bengals free agent tight end Irv Smith Jr. to a one-year deal that was first reported by Adam Schefter. This isn't a crazy big splash or anything like that, but it does help bring in competition slash raise the floor of the tight end room. I think at the very least, Irv could be Kansas City's tight end three and replace Blake Bell, who is a free agent and may not return. Bell is 32 and just didn't look like the same guy last year as he spent most of the season prior recovering from a injury that needed hip surgery. Meanwhile, Smith Jr. is only 25 years old, still has room to grow, has shown a decent ability as a blocker. That's what he was primarily used for first off in college. And having him learning from the greatest tight end to ever play the game, Travis Kelsey, and sharpen his weakness, which is route running, his route tree, is only gonna help him. Irv was drafted by the Vikings in the second round of the 2019 NFL Draft, playing most of the games his first two years with them before needing to miss the entire 2021 season due to a meniscus injury that needed surgery. He then played just half the season in 2022 after needing thumb surgery and suffering a grade three high ankle sprain. Irv then signed a one-year deal with the Bengals last offseason, having a down year there before landing in KC on another one-year deal. And at the time of recording, I don't have details on how much he signed for, but it's probably around a million, 1.5, somewhere in that range. And in the four seasons that Irv has played in the NFL, his best was actually in 2020 when he caught 30 passes for 365 yards and two touchdowns. However, if you average his production out over the four years he has played, it comes out to roughly, as far as the receiving production goes, 250 yards and two touchdowns per season. So I know what some of you are thinking right now, Cole, who cares? about this guy, we need a receiver. Well, the Chiefs do care about this guy and having players that raise the floor of a certain position group is nothing but a good thing. Remember, Blake Bell is on his way out most likely and he himself has never had more than 186 yards receiving and one touchdown in a season. Then Noah Gray has never had more than 305 yards and two touchdowns in a season. So you are instantly upgrading your tight end three at the very least to a guy who has shown to be twice as productive as a receiver than Blake Bell, a guy who is a pretty decent blocker and still has room to grow in every facet of the game. Therefore, I call this signing a win, especially when considering both Blake Bell and Jody Fortson are free agents at the moment, and neither of them are guaranteed to play this upcoming season for the Chiefs. Then around 1 p.m. today, Adam Schefter announced free agent safety Dion Bush is returning to the Chiefs on a one-year deal per source. And I like this one a lot. Bush has been clutch when called upon. Most recently in the AFC Championship game, he picked off Lamar Jackson in the end zone. He knows the system well and has over 400 special team snaps under his belt with the team since 2022. So another example of raising the floor, you bring in a vet who knows the system and can contribute in really any facet that's needed. I like this signing a lot and it's probably for close to a vet men deal as well. But with all that being said, what are your thoughts on the Chiefs signing Irv Smith Jr. to this one year deal? Are you glad that they are making some moves to raise the floor of the weakness in some of their position groups. I think the floor of the tight end room was a bit of a weakness, so that is indeed helpful. Or are you more of the mindset of, Veach, go out there and make a big signing. We need wide receiver help ASAP. And while I think all that is coming, just let me know your thoughts on the moves made so far. Uh, for the Chiefs, I know that we probably aren't super happy with it in some regard, but they did re-sign Chris Jones. They got back Drew Tranquil. They have made some moves. It's just not for new players. They have worked on retaining the legends that they previously had on the roster. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on all that in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.